Tic-Tac-Toe is a game which is easily implemented in Flutter. Within this game we have two players X and O and the goal of each player is to reach here three fields to win the game. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by building here this empty field 3x3. Three three. To create this field I first of all create a class where we have then all the players inside so we have here two players X and O. And lastly we also have here this field none and this none field is basically this empty field without any player inside which we want to build right now. We want to build here a game 3x3, three three. however you can also later change it and therefore I put here a field inside which says that we build it by 3x3. Three three. And secondly we also define the size of each block, so in our case here 92. And now we want to create this matrix, our 3x3 three three field and therefore I create here a list of a list of string. And we also want to initialize this list and therefore I create here a new method set empty fields. And here inside we generate a new list and we want to get started by generating first of all three fields and therefore I simply put here inside the count matrix inside which is exactly this value of three. And inside of this list we want to generate another list and this basically means that each of these blocks here have another list inside and this looks then like this. So we have here one list, then we have another list and then we also have here the third list. And each of these inner lists also have a length of 3. And now we want to define here this inner value and I set it right now to player none, which is here our empty field. And with this code we have basically implemented here an empty field. So we have implemented here all of these 9 fields and we have set all of them to the empty string. And lastly we need to put this matrix list which we have generated inside of this field. Therefore I simply put it here inside of this matrix field and I also call the set state to update our UI. And now it becomes pretty easy so we only need to build right now here our fields out of this matrix here. And therefore I first of all go here to our scaffold and I set here a background color to blue. And with this background color we can later see then all of our white fields. And secondly we go to our body property and here we want to build a column and here we want to map over our matrix and we want to build here for each x a new row. And this means we build right now for each of these values a row where we later put then all of our values inside. And to map over this matrix I have put here a helper class inside and with this one we go over our model. And then we can access here every time the index of this model and also the model itself. So the index would be here 0, 1 and 2. And the value is right now every time empty because we have set an empty string for each of these fields. And by the way if you want to get here this whole source code also of this method you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link you can get access to my Flutter courses where I teach you how you can become a more efficient and better developer. Alright, now let's go back to our build method and let's create these three rows. And therefore I put here the x value inside and this is basically here our index value 0, 1 or 2. And now we simply create this method build row and then we want to access the values and therefore we simply go over our matrix and then we access here this index. And with this one we can basically access here all the values of one index. So let's say we want to access here the values of this index 0. And with this we can then later get then the values of these three fields of our first index. And each of these fields has then later a value. So if it is the X player, the O player or if it is empty. And after we have got the values of our row we want to create here actually a row and then we simply map over these values like before and we use here again this model builder. And with this one we get then the y value and out of this y value we want to build then a field and here inside we put then the x and y value inside. And this basically means that we are right now building here each individual row. So we build here one row, the second row and the third row. And the y value is then basically this value here at the end. So we have here then 0, 1, 2 for the first row and here the same 0, 1 and 2 at the end for the second row. 
And then we simply go over and build here each of these fields and we get here every time the X and Y coordinate, which we can then use to build this field. And therefore I simply create this build field method with the X and Y coordinate. And here inside we basically get then the value of this field, which is then later a state of this player value. So if it is the X value, if it is the O value, or if it is an empty field. And out of this value, we want to create then a button. And here inside, I create then a text and I simply put the value inside. And secondly, we also need to implement the on press. So later, if we click on this field, then we want to add here our functionality. And like you can see, now we have here already our buttons. However, they have the wrong color. And therefore, I also go here to the style property. And then we simply add here the primary color to white. And now we have here exactly nine fields and I also want to set here the size of this field. Therefore you can set this property minimum size and I set it here to the size of 92. And this looks then already like this. And lastly, we also want to add some space between our fields. Therefore I wrap here around a container and I add here some margin to all sides. And this looks then like this. So now we have here some space between our fields. Like you remember, within our init state, we have created here this empty fields. And here we have every time put the player none inside, which is our empty field here. However, we could also change it here, for example, to X. So instead I put here an X inside. And secondly, we also go to our build field method again. And here where we have put our value inside. Here we also need to change our text style and here I simply put then a different color inside to black because our background color is here white. And then you see here all the axes which we have defined initially within our set empty fields method. Later our values have here every time a color of white and therefore I simply can remove here this color again because we don't need it. And then we have here again the white color for our value. And within the set empty fields, we also want to replace here this X by this non field. So we want to create again this empty field. And now we are almost done. The last thing is only to implement the logic. And this is pretty easy in tic-tac-toe. So every time if we click here on one empty field, then we can basically set the player. And at the end, we can also see who has won. First of all, we want to go to our state. And here we want to create this last move string. And this field holds then always the value of the last player who did a move. And initially we have here non player who did a move and therefore I set it here to none. And secondly, we go to our build field method, and here every time if we click on our button, then we want to execute here our logic. And therefore we simply replace it here by a new method select field and we put then this value of this field inside and also the X and Y coordinate. And now we simply create our logic within the select field method. And like you remember, this value can only hold the values X, O or empty. And we want to do only a move if the field is empty. And therefore we simply check if the value is to player none, which is our empty field. And if this is the case, then we basically can change this field. And we can basically define a new value for this field. And I set it right now to player X. And lastly, we simply need to override here our matrix. And this is what we can do by this X, Y value. And with this one, we are basically accessing here this field on which we have clicked. And if we have clicked on this field, then the X and also the Y coordinate are zero. And if we have, for example, clicked on this field, then the zero, zero goes here as a index inside. And now we can basically set a new value for this field. And we can try it right now out. So if I click here on one field, you see that the X value is going here inside. And this is because we set right now the new value every time to this X value. However, what we want to have is that first of all, the X value is set, then later the O value, then the X, O and so on. And therefore we need to exchange here this logic. And therefore we basically access here the last move. And if the last move was from player X, then the next move is for player O. And if player O has last time made a move, then player X will set the new move. And to make this work, we also need to override here every time our last move. And every time if we set a new move, then we also put this new value inside of our last move. And this should right now work. So I click here on one field X on the next one O, X, O and so on. 
To make our game more friendly, we also want to set every time a background color for the X and also another background color for the O player. And therefore we simply create a new method get field color. And here we basically get the value of the current field, which is then X, O or empty. And we simply switch over this value. And if it is then a value of empty, then we want to return here a white background color like what we have right now. And then we also set for each other user a different color. So for the O player, the blue color and for the X player, the red color. And lastly, we go to our build field method and here we basically access then this get field color method and put here our value inside. And then we get here the background color of our field. And right now we have here a white background color, which we then replace by this new determined color. And now if I hot reload, you see that the X player has the red color and the O player the blue color and the empty fields have a white color. We also want to set here a different background color. And therefore we basically set the background color every time to the color of the player who has the next move. So in this case, the red player has the next move. And then you see he is playing and he is putting his field inside. And then it is turning to the blue color, which means that the blue player has the next move. And then he is setting his next one. And then the red color is again appearing and the red one has a next move. And to determine our background color, I create here a new method. And here inside we want to determine the player who is moving right now. And therefore we can access here our last move and we simply invert our last move to get our this move, which is then for this round. And then we can basically use here the same method which we have created before, this get field color. And here we put then our this move inside. And this will be then determining the color of our current move player. And lastly, we need to call this get background color. And therefore we go to our scaffold and here we have this background color and we simply exchange here our blue background color by this new get background color method. And then you see initially we have here a red color. And if I set then a field, then you see it is turning to blue. And if I set the blue one, then it is turning again to red. And now we also want to change here the background color a bit because this is too close to our current player color. And therefore I simply put here within this background color method this alpha inside and this is changing then the color a bit. And now you see that every time if I put here a new field inside it is always changing the color. We also can go back to our build field method and here we can go to our color, our black color and can remove it again. And this will put then our value as a white color inside. And with this, we have already completed the whole UI of our tic-tac-toe game. However, we also want to implement the logic. So if I now, for example, click here, then it should say that the game is over or that he has won the game. And this is what we want to implement right now. And therefore we want to get started by building here this dialog which will pop up later if a player has won or if the game is over. And like you can see this dialog has then a title, a description and also a button to restart the game. And therefore I simply go to this method select field which is every time executed if we click on one of these fields. And if we then set a new field then we want to call this method show end dialog. And here I put then right now this message inside that the player who made the last move has won. And now we want to simply create this show end dialog and therefore I put here this show dialog method inside and we create here an alert dialog. And inside of this alert dialog you can set first of all the title which we have supplied here and which is basically this text here. Secondly we also can set a description and lastly we also can set this button and here I basically put this button with the text restart inside and every time if we press later on this button then we want to empty our fields and this is basically resetting again our fields and set all the fields to this player non field. And lastly you also call this navigator.pop to hide your dialog again. And now we can try it out so every time if we select a field then there should be this dialog popping up. So if I click here on this field you see player X has won and this is basically the player who has made the move right now. And then I can click here on restart and then he will restart the game. And now we want to execute this logic only if the player has really won. And therefore we create here a new method is winner and inside of it we put then the current field inside on which we have clicked so far. And to check a winner I basically have found a source code on Stack Overflow which I have put here inside. 
And this code basically checks if a player has got three fields in a row. And now we can try it out. So we have here already two stones for the X. And if I put here a third stone inside, you see that player X has one and you can restart the game. And lastly, we also need to care about the case that no one is winning. So if I click now on this field, then no one is winning. And then we also want to restart our game and show a dialogue. And to check if our game has ended, we simply create a new method is end. And every time if it is ended, then we show our end dialog. And this time we put here this undecided game inside. And now we want to create this method is end. And here we go over our matrix. And here we want to go over all of the values of our matrix, which are right now our rows. And we also want to go over these values to access here our values. And we make sure that all the values in our matrix are not empty and if this is the case then the game has ended. So let's also try this case out so I click here on the last field and you see we reach here this undecided game. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter and see you soon. Bye!